Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another podcast. I'm telling you what, today is going to be absolutely mind-blowing with the content, knowledge and wisdom we're going to share with you. Mm. And it's all because of my networking capabilities <laughs> and because of my mate Harry. So Harry, thanks for coming on. This is our third podcast we've done. Yep. I really appreciate your time. Now, um, have you been? Oh, very good. Killing it? Yes. Life's amazing? Every day. <laughs> Fantastic. So we've um, we had a lot of people, when we spoke, we did the last podcast, that was like one of the the most viral ones that I did. So many people were messaging me about you. Yeah. And I don't know if you can put some content on the screen, but we did a, a photo shoot at your house yep. on Monday with the basement yep. car garage and the turntable and yeah. all the supercars. Yeah, before. Everyone's going, what's going on with that? So we're going to delve into how he's got there, why he's been successful. Yeah. Like I think I'm successful. You're just on another level. Yeah. How we've linked up and our plans moving forward. Is that Okay. Yes. Fantastic. All right. So, <clears throat> Harry, if people haven't watched the last, last podcast we did or if this is the first time you've seen anything with Harry, yeah. I wanted to give people a bit of a breakdown of yeah. who you are yeah. and what you do. Yeah. So you own a finance company called Loans Direct. Yep, yeah, that's true. And you've had that for? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Now, finance is you're helping people get loans for properties, cars, boat, anything? Yep. Yeah. Anything uh, yeah, mostly commercial, your residential and your equipment loan, which are trucks and trailers. Okay, so you're the money man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, aside from that, and yeah. I've met all your staff, they're super lovely. I've been to your office many yeah. times. You started a construction company called Harkon Projects. Yes. And you've had that for? About 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Harkon Projects. You And how many projects you're running at the moment are you building? Yeah, we do about uh, 100 a year. 100. Pro- um, um, yep. I've got about, uh, it, it, it goes by the insurance turnover. We've got about 50 mil on us in Victoria. Yep. We operate in all states of Australia, not just uh, your Darwin and Tasmania. Okay. So apart from Darwin and Tasmania, you're building in all states? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. So you're in the finance, mm. you're in the construction, mm. but the major thing that you're doing to generate income and, and wealth for yourself is land banking. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit to the people watching what land banking is, yeah. how you got into it, what it's about? Yeah, we we measure in land banking in Victoria only. Um, so the government has appointed a body, it's called VPA. VPA? Victoria, yeah, yep. Victorian Planning Authority. And what they do is, argument's sake, we need about 50,000 houses a year uh, for the for the new dwellings. Um, the government approaches, so we got all the farms with the northwest or southeast of Melbourne. Um, Far- farms like this is like farms, farms. Yeah, we, we call them green veg areas yes and government goes out there and they rezone these properties and they become in the urban growth zone or eventually it's called psp approved which means now that we can redevelop those farms into whether it's industrial commercial or residential lots for the upcoming demand of the properties for the new inhabitants to settle uh, we go out and we buy these lands which are getting rezoned or are rezoned and develop them eventually. And you just bought a, a couple thousand lots in uh, out in Rockbank, or you bought some land you're converting to lots. You're saying? Yeah, so we got we got lands uh, mostly in the you know, northwest of mm. uh, Melbourne and uh, Geelong. Yeah, so we how got much a, did you spend on those? Uh, every land is different. It ranges from anywhere between as low as five mil to all the way up to hundred mil. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And uh, here yeah, we got about sixteen hundred lots coming up in the next three years in residential, and about quarter of a million of square meter of industrial and commercial space. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. And you're doing something with super lots, and so can you explain what the super lots are? So the same thing, Green Wedge, but you're making them into larger lots that you're giving out to Woolworths, Bunnings. Yeah. Things so like that. so so every land, argument's sake, is a fifty acre land. Once it gets PSP approved, we got the NDA, which is called Net Developable Area. Mm. And in that, we, uh, we we make it as the best uh, best money possible we can get. So whether it's a small shopping center on there, whether it's 200 lots of residential dwellings, a child care, a age care, a medical facility, or whether it's a, yeah, a, a car wash and stuff. So, so, the, so the land surveyor marks the planning permit, how we can get the best use out of the land, and we just develop the land accordingly. So when I met Harry, um, I, w- I wasn't actually, I've been in real estate for m- nearly, this is my 16th year of being an agent. He opened my mind to all the all these other avenues of really large blocks. And you said to me, mm. the the highest performing agents in terms yeah. of commissions are the ones selling, 
they're doing crazy numbers of commissions. Yep. I, th- I thought a million dollars CGI was great. Yep. They're doing that every couple of weeks with yep. these sales, but no one knows about it. Yep. It's a small niche network and you were trying to get me into that. You were so encouraging, like, Johnny, you can do it. Yep. And you'll tell me what to do, research the lands, and you're making me find the lease values of the super lots. Remember I was doing that for you and yep. I was learning? Yep. Yep. I learned so much from him in a week that I've learned in 16 years of, of real estate because your knowledge is just on another level. Yeah. So you're doing all that, which is... Mm. Um, I, I think you're like a uh, mini Elon Musk. And I thought I did a lot of shit. Yeah. I thought I'm the I'm a machine yeah. in my own right. But you're what you're doing is just f- freaking mind blowing. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that we've become mates through it all because you're just teaching me so much. I'm I'm really thankful for that. So you have got these 1600 lots coming up. Mm. Um, I was gonna I was gonna mention too. When what drove you to because I'll tell you a story. Yeah. You know, we had all the supercars at the, the shoot the other day. I put that all over my social media, right? Yeah. I just did cardio this morning at Muscle yeah. City in Bentley East. Yeah. Okay, so I walked into the gym. There's a guy there. I can't remember his name. I think it's Eugene. Lovely guy. Yeah. yeah. He follows me on Instagram. And he goes, what's the deal with all those cars yeah. on the shoot? I'm like, oh, he's a, you know, he's a friend of mine, Harry. Yeah. We're good mates. I'm actually seeing him now to do a podcast. This yeah. was just this morning. Yeah. And he goes, is that just rich Indian money? Yeah. I'm like, bro, he actually didn't have any money when he came here. He yeah. didn't have money. He made yeah. it all himself. Yeah. So we'll talk about your adversities that yeah. you went through. But what made you – because what made you think I'm going to figure out the biggest and best ways to to make the most amount of money as possible? Because yeah. we're talking – we're not talking someone making 200 grand a year or a million dollars a year or $10 million a year. We're talking – astronomical big bigger figures yeah. like how did you how did you learn all this yeah and do it i think there's no there's no magic bullet to it it's it's pretty much just hard work and just experience you just keep doing hard work and 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 eventually just just pays off and especially being in finance and doing such long hours for so many years you just fo- you just follow the money trail like you i literally have financed thousands of clients and i see where the real bucks are made and you copy them and yeah and i just try to mimic them whether it's property development whether whether it's your stock markets or whether it's your business values um yeah so i, I see where people do make money and and eventually if you if you got the right man's mindset to it i i, 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 I yeah i don't being in business myself i, I don't know what people say but if they just do simple principles of business, one Tell is hard work, and Cover. second is, is honesty. You pay the people on time, and you get what what's owed to you on time, and 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 you just do the hard work. And eventually, you will get there. Especially in Australia, you don't need links, you don't need politicians to back you up, you don't need bureaucrats, you don't need bribery. There's no corruption. There's no corruption. Yeah, not not yeah, not not but what I know. There's some of that back in India. Oh, heaps. It's it's every everything runs on it. Far out. Yeah, it doesn't matter who says what. Like this, the people think it's democracy. It's, it's it's totally dictatorship. Incredible. All right, now let's go. So, f- mind blowing shit. I'm just, I love it because what what's happened with me is I'm I'm like a sponge, right? Yeah. So everything I've learned through my bodybuilding, my yeah. real estate, I've had I've had mentors. Yeah. And I've searched for mentors, business mentors, and I've always tried to. Yeah big on self-development. How yeah. can I improve every aspect, every minute? And you're the same. You said to me, I'll do, I think you said to me the other day, I'll like, I'll brush my teeth, I'll do something at the same time because I want to yeah. save like seven seconds or yeah. something crazy like that. And you brush from the other hand. So the other, 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 the other mind works. You don't do the same, same stuff with the same things again. So I think that's where we're quite similar, which I, which I really like. Yeah. Now I'm going to talk about what this little announcement we've got. Yeah. Which is exciting. So Harry and myself met. We've been friends for a couple of years. Yeah. Started selling some properties for him. Yeah. Hard client. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he sticks to his price, but we get it done, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. And you, and you don't – and the good thing about you is you're not desperate to sell these properties. Yeah. So you just stick to your price and the buyers come along and get them, which yeah. is really, really cool. Yeah. But Harry said to me, because he liked what I did so much, he goes – Yeah. Because we should start your own real estate company. Remember when we first met? You're yeah. like, Johnny, let's start our own real estate company. You can sell all my properties. Yeah. I'm like – no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like real estate. Yeah. But I've got this vision with my brand. Yeah. And I was telling you from the start, I've got this brand. And you're probably thinking, what is this? You know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But I said, I'm, I want to blow this thing up. That's my vision and my goal. And I think you started seeing people wearing it at the local gyms and you think maybe something's going on. Yeah. And then I thought maybe you saw my discipline and how hard I was working. Yeah. It might have inspired you a little bit too. Yeah. 
I got you fit for Tomorrowland. Yep, you did. And which was fair. And we started training together. So we've just built this relationship over a while. And what happened was when I went with that situation, what happened with that other company that set me back, yep. I think I went to you just after that. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I had to, I got to shark tank this a bit. Yeah. So I went to you and said, hey, because you, do you know what happened? Yeah. Heap, heaps of people would come to me and go, Never Home's amazing. Yeah. So many people, over the years, so many people have come to me and wanted to back me with this business. I tried with a couple of friends. It just, the connection wasn't right. Yeah. And I was doing all the work. Yeah. And they were just trying to give me a little bit of, yeah. a little bit of cash or a little yeah. bit of guidance. But I couldn't click with anyone. The alliances were different. Yeah. This has been happening for years. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go to you. Who is the wealthiest guy I know? Okay. Who is the smartest guy I know? Yeah. And it's you. Yeah. Like I don't know anyone who's been more successful. Yeah. They might be smarter. Yeah. But in terms of success, you even said Rand is smarter than you. Yes. But you figured out how to make the money. Yes. As in the IQ level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because you might be high IQ, but it doesn't mean you got heaps of money. Yeah. So I said, Harry, do you want to come on yeah. and help me with this brand? So yeah. what we did was, guys, you've come on board Never Home as a, a key shareholder. Yep. So you're a partner with the business. Yep. So we, we teed that up a couple months ago, I think. Yep. We did it all officially through yep. ASIC. Yeah. So Harry, now guys, he's a he's a he's a key shareholder in this business. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for yep. coming on board. He believed yep. in me. Yeah. And so I've had the business now for ten years, and you know I've had so much support from everyone. Yep. Around the world, buying the yep. just so much positive encouragement. Yep. And it gave me a lot of belief to keep going. And you've come on. And I think now, now's the time for me to take the next steps. Yeah. And since since we've been working together for the past couple of months, things have just gone boom. Yep. Not not even just well, the financial yeah, backing because yeah, yeah. you've helped me out. You haven't helped me out that much yeah. more than not as much as people think. Yep. But the the drive you've given me to do yep. shit. You yep. said let's do a Netflix show. Yep. Let's get it on the ASX. Yep. Let by this date. How yep. do we grow this faster? You, you said Johnny, you need to build teams. Yep. And you've organised teams. Yep. You've, you've just been astronomical. Yeah. So that business sense that you've had with everything, you're, you've actually given me a bit of time because you're busy and I, I can't thank you enough. So, hey, yep. thanks for coming on board. <laughs> no, please. Yeah, we just thanks, wanted to announce it now. So Harry, guys, yeah. is uh, a key shareholder in Neverhome and yeah. now I've got full confidence we can get this thing pumping. And the vision of the brand, we said about this, but we want to make this the number one activewear brand in Australia. Yeah. And we'll do every, it's going to be a hard, it's not, easy, it's not going to be an easy journey, but we'll put in the work and do everything yeah. we can to, yeah. to make this happen. Yeah. So thank you so much. I was just blabbing on for a while. I think for a record, we're doing quarter million of sales a month at the moment. No, not yet. Yeah. Not yeah. yet, but we yeah. will. You will. We were trying to do that by, we should, we should better do that by June if everything's projected properly. Yeah. 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 And that's we've got to quadruple it. Can triple it, yeah. Well, we've got enough of that. We've got enough of that stock to come in. We just got to sell it. Yeah. So thank you. Mm. Um, so you've come on board. This is the next phase of the business. Yeah. The vision is to make Never Home the number one active brand in Australia. Yeah. But the vision is also, and you aligned with it too, because we want people to live healthier, a healthier, yeah, happier, happier, active life. Yeah. And you're helping. Like your in, involvement is to help get it out there to more people. Yeah. Because we truly yeah, want. You, you love fitness. You love. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think every, uh, everyone should. That's number one. People say, what's the most important thing in, in your life? And some people say family. I think it should be health. Because if you're not healthy, you can't even look after your own families, can you? Tell so, me. So, so I think health, 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 being, being healthy and being happier should be your number one, should be everyone's number one priority. Because then you can look after your loved ones and you can spend time where it really means. But if you're unhealthy and you're overweight, you're obese, you, you're diabetic or you're cancerous, everything's gone. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, you can't get health. You can go buy Rolls Royce, you can go buy your health. You can't buy your health, can you? No, no. You got to work for yeah, it. Yeah, and it takes hours and hours, as as you know. It takes years. It's it's not it, just like it becomes. It takes years to become obese. Same thing. It takes years to become healthy. And you're so busy too. You still meet me at the gym at six thirty, and we'll go we'll go train abs and have a laugh. Yeah. And you and it's funny. You cruise through the gym. Yep. No one knows how successful you are. You say up. You're so polite to everyone, but then you get to work and you work your ass off. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to. We just want to encourage people to live a fulfilled. 
happy life. The meaning yeah. of the brand is we're never home. We're yeah. always doing and achieving things. Like yeah. the shirt says, never compromise, never give up. Yeah. And you aligned yourself with it. So we yeah. were excited to tell everyone yeah. that you are a key, share, key shareholder, key yeah. shareholder in this. Yeah. So you're pretty much co-owner with me now in, in essence, really. Yes. Now, let's go back to some real expiring shit because, you know, when you see someone successful, people think, fuck you. Yeah. You know, look at this motherfucker. He's got yeah. all this shit, big mansions. When I met you, you, you remember you were thinking of buying a private jet. You showed me that jet. It was like $40 million. Yeah. And you thought about that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking, yeah. this guy's buying a jet. Yeah. And you said something about like just saving time or getting around the world. Yeah. So, but that, that didn't happen overnight. Talk about to me the story where the adversities you had growing up. You know, you told me about a professor joking about you were a waiter. Remember these things you told oh, me? Oh, yeah. So, so I, tell me about so, that. Yes, yeah, so I came here. I started my studies back in 98 at RMIT, computer science um, degree. And back then, you know, I, 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 was, I was dumb as hell. I had no knowledge the word, or people skills, nothing on me. So the work-life balance was just it's the first time I worked in my life. So I started doing dishwashing. I still remember uh, knocking on the doors on all Eklund Street in St. Kilda and pretty much all uh, R- Richmond to give me a job for dishwashing. Finally, I got one. It was a cafe called Spiros on Bridge Road. And, um, and, they, yeah, and they asked me, what's your, what's your washing speed for you? I, I had no idea. Like, what, is there washing speed for Something. utensils? Anyway, they gave me a job. And I still remember I came out of the cafe and I jumped so high. There was a parking uh, sign up there, the bollard. says one, one a parking and I, and, I, and I touched that thing. And I said, Ooh, I, I can't fail now. I got a job. Fuck yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like no one can fail me. I, I got the money and I'll have the bread and butter to eat. And that's You're it. You're probably making four dollars an hour or something. Ten dollars an, an hour. Ten bucks an hour. Ten bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah. but you can go hungry and, and you, you can't, can't go, go right. So you just wanted yeah. to have food. Yeah, exactly. Because your parents are you're here on your own, right? To yes. Study. Yeah. So left India to come and study. Yeah. You had sixty bucks, right? What did you start with? So six I, grand, so, seven so, grand. Yeah. So my, my my father gave me seven grand. Yeah. With all the life savings, pretty much what he had. Yeah. And uh, and he saved and and when I went back after five years home, my mother told me because my father never did that he my father only had four, four pairs of clothing. He never bought anything for him for the next four years. Everything he had, he used to send it to me, whether it's two hundred bucks, whether it's thousand bucks, or, or my uni fees was the most important. But then I, I lost it all in the last podcast in gambling, the seven grand. I literally had nothing in my bank account. So just NZ. touching, you gambled. <laughs> yeah. Your dad's life savings. Yeah. All the way. Why because, did you do that? <laughs> oh, because yeah, like you just make five hundred bucks when I went there. I bought my Nokia. I said, "Wow, that's that's so good." And then you went again and again and again, and eventually you lose. Did you win the first time at the casino? I, I, I win. I win five, six times. For firstly, when I went. Oh, and, I see. And gets ya. Yeah, gets ya. It gets ya, and so that's easy money. Can I jump in on oh, this? I'm sorry to get, break the flow. Yeah. I went through a stage of gambling too. Yeah. I, ne- I never told anyone. <clears throat> yeah. Me and my old, we're not mates anymore. This guy Chich. Yeah. We'd um we'd go every Wednesday night. We yeah. go to we go to Crown, yeah, and uh, two weeks in a row we won big. We back, I was like twenty, I think. We had about fifty bucks, and we turned yeah. into six hundred. Yeah. Then the next week we went. We had about a hundred bucks. We turned into about a grand. Yeah. Third time we went, we we went with a grand. We yeah. turned into like four grand or something yeah. like that. Yeah. We walked out with the money. Yeah. We go, yeah. yes, we yeah. left. We're, yeah. we're screwing the casino. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to be billionaires, yeah. like like yeah. you know. Yeah. I looked at him. He looked at me and goes. Let's go back and double yeah, it again. Yes, yeah. What happened? We went back, lost it all five yeah, minutes. Yeah, like that. I never gambled again. Yeah. My dad was a gambler too. Mm, yeah. Heavy, heavily put him through massive depression. Yeah. He made me promise never to gamble. So yeah. I won't do that. So yeah. you lost it all, but yeah. so you had nothing. Was, but but that was such an important life lesson. Like because I lost it all and that was the turning turning part for me. Did you because, you try to neck yourself, right? Sorry? You tried to Yeah, try, because I, I sat outside the Crown Casino, there's this Yarra River. Bang on uh, the Whiteman Street corner, and I stood there ne- ne- next to the ne- ne- next to the fence, and uh, and I said, "Fuck this! Uh, this is nothing gonna work. I got nothing on me. My, my my father trusts me with with everything, and I just jumped into the yard. And there was an agent called Naresh Gulati who I came with Oceanic Consultants, and um, I called him. Before, oh, he called me before that 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 um, uh, that I, that I heard something's not right. I disconnected the phone, jumped in, but the yard is not deep enough to 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 drown. <laughs> Came out again and said, nah, fuck, I'll try to make it work. Went into back in Crown and there were some Sri Lankans working. I yeah. asked them if there's a job available. They yeah. said, that's fine. We put two. So we, you worked at And there's advanced agency back then. They put me on this agency. They gave me four hours work the next day. I said, okay, I'll start fuck, working. that's all right. Yeah. And, and then, because that's a work-life balance game. Because I used to have four days of uni. I stopped going to uni. I failed all the subjects first year. I failed half <laughs> the subjects like next me, year. 
I don't know, cause cause the money was and and yeah, and then eventually in six months time I saved, uh, I had seventy bucks. I bought my Nike jumper. I was so happy. I finally I bought something for myself. It's such a good feeling. And 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 the skates, the Nike skates I bought. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. That was I think hundred hundred bucks something. Never homecoming now. Yeah, that's good. And then, um, but but I kept kept on failing. And eventually, Aramati took a decision in one and a half years to to throw me out of the uni because I was failing so much. And uh, and they had a full committee. And there's I still remember the professor's name. He was Arthur. Um, and, and, he, and he was in the committee and he asked me, oh, so what do you do, Harry? For you? I said, uh, I, I, do, I do dishwashing. And, oh, and he started laughing a little bit. Oh, so that's who you are, a waiter. And that really kicked me because you don't know what's right and wrong. And someone says that to you, it really oh, kicks you in. Oh, that drove As, you and, 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 and really, really um, pushed me down. But anyway, they, they failed me out. I went to Holmes Glen. I started driving, driving cabs then, driving money. I was 21. Driving cabs was a little bit more, more money. I did my um, advanced diploma in a distinction, high distinction average, came back to RMIT. They had another committee that once a student is kicked out, they don't take it back. But because I had such high grades in Holmes Lane, they took it back and I did a computer science engineering degree and, and I did a distinction average and, and it came out of uh, RMIT. So, 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 so that's what the journey was. So tell them again um, about how you would sleep <coughs> in your... You, would, you, you wouldn't even have go home. You'd just be working and then you have a nap. At, there was yeah. some stage where you were sleeping yeah. in a yeah, car. Yeah, so Grand Casino is one thing. It's so huge, it's so massive. You can't sleep anywhere, not even in the toilets. The guards come along 24-7 and they see anyone nosing off, losing, and, 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 and they ask you to stand up. So there's no way in fly, Crown, because I've worked there for literally four years, pushing trolleys and whatnot. You can't sleep. So the, so, so the shift used to finish at 12, 40 bucks. You can't, you can't um, afford a cab, 25 bucks. And the, the last trains were 12 o'clock, Pakenham Cranbourne um, from Flinders. You used to run on the uh, South Bank to catch the train. You used to miss the train, cause 12 or five, 12 or seven last trains. Then you just sleep on the stations. So you slept at Flinders Street Station? Yeah, cause you, you can't sleep on the iron benches cause there's so much of wind coming along. And, 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 and the cleaners used to come in the night changing the bin liners. So what you do is you go down the ramp and the shutters goes down and you just sleep next to the shutters because there's no wind there. You, you, you just sleep next to the shutters in the, in the, in the hallway, in the, in the tunnel there. So that's where you used to sleep. And you used to put an alarm, get back in the morning, five o'clock, go back to the train and just catch the train, the first train's back. And, and it happened so many times, I used to miss my Carnegie station and used to go back to, to Dainong again and come back to the city again because you just doze off. Because you yeah. work so hard. Yeah, because you work so hard. So I think that's important for people to see that <clears throat> I did a uh, live the other day about people complaining. I'm sick of saying, I'm sick of yeah, cunts yeah. complaining. Yeah, yeah. You know, you might hear it too. Someone's yeah. complain. Uh, people complain about eating healthy or going yeah. to the gym. Like people yeah. that think they're great because they go to the gym at six a.m. Yeah, shut the fuck up. That yeah. is that is a non-negotiable. Yeah, that I really feel now society and people are just complacent and yeah. fucking lazy and don't yeah. know adversity and hard work. Yeah. They look at you and think, yeah. "Fuck this guy." Yeah. But you've been through. Yep. And there's so many more stories we can we can tell, no doubt. Yeah. To get where you're at. Yeah. Now, should I touch on this too? I've, yeah. I've got some cool stories as well, but yours are f fascinating. Yeah. Um. Tell them about how you, you didn't, because you said to me, Johnny, I was pretty dumb growing yeah. up, right? Yeah. I thought, oh, it gives me a bit of hope. You know, yeah. if this guy yeah. was dumb and has made it, maybe yeah. I, you know, yeah. I can do it too. Yeah. Tell us about how you didn't know about aeroplanes and all oh, that stuff. Oh, yeah. So. So uh, looking looking back now, yes, I was I was dumb as hell. So <laughs> I, I I went on the airplane. That's the first time I was flying when I was sending coming. Is coming that when to you Australia. came to Australia? Yeah. yeah, the first time. And and I and I got off to um, I got 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 to Melbourne Airport, got a cab, and and we drove off. But uh, and then I catched a domestic flight. I think probably a couple of years or more. Um, I think I was going to uh, Adelaide or someplace. And 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 I, and I, and I went on the airport. This time we have to climb up the ladder to the airplane. And, I think just before that as well, I realized that actually the aeroplane flies. Because <laughs> I, th I thought it just was sitting in a room and, and we go in the, in the tunnel, the boarding gate, and you go into the other room and there's like a space shift that just takes you to a different country. I was so dumb. Like I, did, like, yeah, I knew that aeroplanes do fly and everything, but yeah, I, I thought that from room to room, I just, I just flo flown back to Melbourne. So, so, so that was... That was See, the that, that, and that's inspiring too, because what it, what it teaches you that... Yeah. You can you can have learnt behaviors and learn things. Yes. And the mind is so capable of. I, I'm I'm so influenced by you. You've got no fucking idea. Yeah. The, <coughs> since I've known you for the last two years, I've leveled up. It's just mem remember last week you said I'll tell you guys something. This is this, you you changed my life that day. Yeah. 
a, a, one of my clients called you. Yeah. For finance, you needed two million dollars. <coughs> yeah. Remember that guy? You know. Yeah, what I'm yeah, talking I remember. About. Need a finance. Harry called him. Harry goes, "Is this guy on drugs?" Yeah. I said, "I think so." He goes, yeah. "Johnny, do yourself a favor. Yeah. Don't hang around or yeah. associate with these people. Yeah. It's going to be the biggest detriment to your life. Yeah. Because they come, they're calling me. I'm, you know, yeah. all these things are happening. Yeah. Just stay the fuck away. Yeah, yeah. And you sent me, you actually yeah, sent so, me so I'm, text. I'm, I'm a big believer, like your energy levels are like just like your your petrol tank in a, every morning. Like you have 100 Explain liters of fuel every every hour or every minute you spend on someone, that's that's a fuel wastage. And people are there to suck your lives away. Like they, they like they, they just want to take everything from you and, and still do nothing. Like yes, if there's someone to be helped, go go out, go out of your way. Like you take this old lady to the hospital, you be you, you super kind and help, help people. I'm with you. But then they are these suckers out there which will try to suck the energy and still still bad mouth you and still do, do, do the detrimental stuff. You gotta cut away from it. Like you gotta spend every minute of your life that means something to get somewhere. Whether it's your friends, your family, your loved ones, or earning money, whatever, or your bodybuilding, whatever it does gives give, gives you good vibes and, and happiness. See, once you once you know how to be strong and cut away from this negativity. That's when I think you, you will take the next step. Because you told me, Johnny, your problem is you you <coughs> like you want to keep everyone happy. Yes. You said to me, you got to be the bad guy. You, you got to be a bad. I know. I hate. I just. It's just not in my nature. But yeah. I've tried to be that guy. Yeah. And I'm I'm getting better at now. But, I'm but leveling then, up. But then you'll be bad to your own family one day because you you won't have enough time to spend with them, which does matter. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. See, that's exactly right. Like I got two kids on me, twelve and thirteen, and I'd love to spend time with them. Whether it's a passion with basketball, or whether it's school or camping, or just just, just small chats. Like my son loves baking. But if, by, but if you spend all this time with the, with, the, with the other guys, you won't have real time to spend with your loved ones eventually, right? So it's no point. That's true. And you even said to so me... So you're doing bad by them. That's true. And you yeah. said to me... Um, and you're not afraid to tell someone how it is. Yeah. You know, like I'm a bit... I tiptoe <coughs> around it sometimes. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll let it go. Yeah. And you'll say to the, you might say to that person, hey, <coughs> you're not afraid to f- offend them yeah. if it's going to better them. Yep. Yeah. You don't give a fuck because you, you just say yeah. how it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which which I really appreciated. Yeah. These yeah. are the messages you sent me that day, yeah. just so yeah. you know. Yeah. Because this is um, being around people who can really give you advice. Yeah. Not everyone's going to give you advice, but yeah. you got good intent. Every person that I know that's met you, yeah. Even the guys that brought over those, the Maybachs and the cars yeah. at your house yeah. the other day, yeah. yeah. They did it for you like that. Yeah. And remember, some guys pulled out for me. Yeah. And you said to me, yeah. It will happen once you're powerful. Once you're powerful. Yeah, because they'll be scared to do to back up on, on you because mm. they know how much they got to lose. So it just happens. Uh, See, so even you asked me to pull some favors that day. I just got them to straight away. Yep. You know what I mean? That's yep. power. Yep. You got, and yep. success is power. You said to me, <clears throat> is that guy on drugs or something? Yeah. He just speaks like that all the time. I'm like, I think he's always on drugs. He goes, makes sense. Sad to see guys wasting their lives like that. Yeah. I said, you know, he's a bit of a loose cannon. He goes, you should cut yourselves from downers like that. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. I said, I agree with you. Blah, 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 blah. Then he said this to me and I want everyone, this this is something you text me. Always present yourself as your every hour is worth $1,000. Yep. Trust me, people sense that and will appreciate your time. Yeah. If you have to be rude and arrogant at times, so be it. Yeah. Business in life is cutthroat. Mm. There's no free lunches. Yeah, I'll screenshot that. Yeah, because I still remember I, I went back to my home country, Bang India. I, I was with my girlfriend back then, and we were really naive, really weak, and really dumb, both of us. And we cashed a cab going back to the airport, and this couple of cab drivers took us for a ride, took us all around Delhi, which was the the capital city of India, and we were so scared in a nutshell because we thought that they either wanna kill us or rape us or or, 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 or just take the money from us, because. People sense the weakness. Once you, whether it's a cab driver or a waitress or a professional, when you meet someone, they realize how weak and strong are you. It just survives. You don't have to say anything. They just realize. So it's 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 imperative that you that you portray confidence, even if you don't have one. You, you always should be a confident personality. People say that rape is the well, from the girls. Rape was the was the worst thing that happened to her. I think lack of confidence or killing that confidence in you is even worse than rape. You should have always confidence in your life. Doesn't matter who you are, because people sense that once you enter the room, you enter someone or you talk to someone. You gotta be confident in whatever you do. Yeah, you're very yeah. You're 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 you're. Uh, I'm 
<clears throat> I've never met someone with confidence like you. Yeah, because I, I literally know girls who've been raped at 13 years old or 14 or, 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 or they've been sexually assaulted since, since their child by their own mother, father, whether it's their brothers, sisters. You, you got to have confidence in your life and you got to have someone to, you know, to, to, to replicate to. It's, it's, it's no point living without confidence because everyone will try to kill that confidence once or other because that's how they get their power, right? Because if someone's sitting over you, that's how they get their power. At least the dumb people. You can't give that confidence away. You've got to be a strong personality. I understand not everyone can be, but yeah. It, it isn't for everyone. Yes. But you can definitely work at it, I think. <coughs> yeah. Um, I'll send you this, Justin, uh, and I want you to put that on the screen, what he said, sent, sent me there. <coughs> that. Yep, please. I think, I think people need to see that. It's going to wake a lot of... After you sent me that message, I was yep. like, I, I just I just became an animal. Yeah. I started making more money, doing more deals. I was pushing my supplies a bit more. Very nice, yep. though. Yeah. But it levelled me up. So thanks yep. for that. Yeah. These conversations, you're not going to hear from many people. So, so just to be on the record, so I started respecting Johnny. Like he was selling a property for me. I think it was Unit 10 at Earlstown in Hillsdale, a townhouse, for 900 grand. And uh, Johnny called me, oh, Harry, um, something happened and, uh, and i got to go away. I said, what happened? He said, I came to an open inspection and there was the owner in one of the units. He parked in the visitor car spot or some of the car spot which this owner said. I, I parked in his car you spot, but car I spot? thought I parked in a visitor car yep. spot. And he came up to him and started saying, fuck you, why are you spotting? Uh, and he said, I'm, I, I apologize. He, I, and he apologized to him, okay, I'll move my car. And he had to go down the stairs for, to get to the basement to repark your car. And while he was going down, this old man, I think he was 60 years old from memory, he pushed him down the stairs. Mm. And Johnny being Johnny, you can see he can do 100 kilo bench press or whatever not. He's like, he's really training up. Like, if he would have put a finger on him, I'm sure he might be a de dead man. And he, and he still backed off and he said, I apologize again. I told you I'm, I'm reparking my car. I will and I'm going down. And that really, and that's what it means to me. Like, you got to choose your fights. You can't fight every battle. Like, you, to be someone, you got to know which fight. Yes, if, if, if someone abducts your kids or something to your family or so, something really happens, yes, stand up for it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to, to back down because that's even a bigger sin. But... To, to have to back off on this on this small portion that's what the real man does that's what a stronger man do and that's when I started really respecting Johnny man he's a real real real, uh, real deal let's let's just do something together because that that what it means to me because real people put their head down work hard during the day look after the family or or, 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 or do the right stuff Appreciate the that, wannabes man. are the ones who come on let's let's have a fight have a punch on and that's what they get the attention from mm -hmm. we're not there to get attention from these things we got bigger things to, to get our attention from. Couldn't agree more. And I respect that those people, the hard workers, more than, than these wannabes, which is out there and, you know, just, just, the, just, the just looking for a fight. Yobbo is running a muck. Yeah, because you got kids to look after. Anything happens to us, the whole family will, will, will crash. We, we, we can't even afford that. Yeah. We're Thanks, not gangsters. Man. Thanks for appreciating that, yeah. I kept my call and, and I knew that he might disrupt the auction. I yeah. could hurt him. He pushed, I, he pushed me down the stairs. And I, I know. Yeah. Kept my core, said, yeah. that's all right. Yeah. He's got his own reasons. He's upset. Yeah. I'm fit. I'm good looking. It's all good. My life's great. Yeah. One little in, uh, altercation is not going to ruin my day. No, true. Very true. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm glad that you brought that up. Now, adversities, you've had a few. You're going to talk about one of mine now too. So if you didn't know, um, what drove me heavily in my life is I had a lot of uh, circumstances where I, I was in some really tough situations. And one is where I got stabbed twice. Yep. So my brother had a party. This was before, like, social media was huge. I was about 21. A gang tried to gay, gay crush the party. Yep. So I was at my parents' house. We had uh, some boys at the front. About 20 guys trying to get in. Mm -hmm. My mate Vince, I saw Vince at the freaking gym this morning. Did cardio with him, funnily enough. I've got him saved in my phone, just so you know. This is, this is unbelievable. Just so you know, I saw Vince. And his name, name is saved as Vince Stab because mm -hmm. he's the reason I got stabbed yep. that night. If it wasn't for Vince, sorry Vince, but he's the reason I got stabbed in the chest and in the head. Yeah. So Vince said to these guys, guys, fuck off. You're not getting in the party. Get out of here. Mm. The guy hooked up, got a trolley pole out and goes, fuck you. Roll over Melbourne was the gang's name. We're going to fucking tear this house down. Yeah. Me, I was, I'm was, i like, all right, I'm a bit bigger than these guys. I'll sort it out. I'm a peacemaker. It's all good. So I said, hey, hey boys, mm -hmm. I'm, just tr I'm trying to yep. keep the peace, yeah? Uh, hey, guys, don't sh look, look, we don't want any trouble. It's all good. It's a nice family party here. You're not invited. Seriously, I understand you want to have some fun, but you just need to leave. Yeah. This motherfucker headbutts me. Boom. 
I got a root canal, he breaks his teeth, I'm like, fuck this cunt. I grabbed him, I threw him against the car, we just started blowing punches, then he gets a knife, stabs me in the chest, so I got yeah. this, uh, oh shit, rip my shirt, but there's a little, see that scar there? Yep. He stabbed me there, mm. and then I was stumbling, I fell on the ground, mm. I fell on the ground in the middle of the road, and then everyone just started kicking me. I'm like, in that moment I go, I'm gonna die. Mm. I thought, I'm gonna die. I felt, I felt like, fuck, I'm gonna fucking die in this moment. Then, I get this bang on the back of my head. I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? <clears throat> Maybe I got bottled or something. In that moment then, when I got hit in the back of the head, all the boys from the party came in, rushed the guys, and they just sprinted. Yep. Everyone just sprinted off. So I'm yep. like, I got up, I'm walking around, I'm like thinking, I've got blood pissing down my neck like this. I'm like, yeah. what's going on? And someone screamed, someone's got stabbed. I'm like, fuck, I think it's me. Holy shit. So he, he hit me in the back of the head with a knee cleaver. Yeah. Yeah. So see that? Can you see that scar there in the back of my head? Yeah, a little bit. It's, yep. it's probably hard to see with all the hair. Yeah. It's it's just here. Yep. Just there. See that? Yeah. So he hacked me in the back of the head with one of those meat cleavers. It's about this big, like a big knife, and he just hacked me in the back. Thank God he didn't hit my face. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yeah. After that happened, went to hospital, got stitched up, got stitched up. It wasn't too bad. It just like um. The stab just went in there. Lucky I got big fucking juicy chest yep. to, 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 to hold it to get in the way. But since that happened, I go, fuck, you know what? You don't know what's going to happen yeah. with life. You, you don't know when your last day might be. Yeah. And that's what motivated me yeah. to push this brand yeah. when I didn't feel like it. Yeah. When I came to you to uh, ask you as an investor, I think that time I got, I got stabbed, it could have been my last day. Who knows yeah. what could have happened? Yes, yeah. I could have been paralyzed or something. Yeah, yeah. But those moments of adversity, mm. I remember them as driving factors. Do you have any of those yourself? Yeah, so, uh, so, um, so, so, so now, even none of my family or friends knows this, but I was diagnosed with chronic about a couple of years ago, a little bit more. C and Chronic fatigue? No, it's a chronic disease. Uh, 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 really? Illness, yeah. And, 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 that, and you get a flashback because you, you get a given timeline, this is how much you got to live for. And... And, 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 and that, that's really powerful because it happened. And, and that's when you know what the real things are, what you should be doing and what you should, should not be doing. As you said, keep it real, keep it simple and, 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 and just do things what really matters to you. And, that, and that's when you realize like fitness is one thing that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go do tomorrow I, didn't, didn't, I didn't know this, you didn't yeah, tell me. Yeah, no one knows. And, 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 Fuck. and, and, then, and then you realize, okay, you gotta travel the world. You gotta do the things which, which really matter oh, to you. Oh my God. And, and that flashback oh. sitting in a hospital bed it really is so strong. Yeah, it makes sense. Because you're given a timeline of this, how much you're gonna days or months you gotta live. Oh, and the, bro. And I okay. came out of it, but 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 the flashbacks are. You gonna be okay? Then, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna okay. be okay. But it, it it all stays in the body. But but you'll be okay. But and 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 that's so powerful because that that really governs you of what really should matter time. in your life. And time is everything. You gotta keep keep it real, keep it simple, and and you gotta be happy every day. It's no point living any other way. I noticed. Yeah, one thing I like about you, you always. Always dancing or happy or doing like yeah. having Cause, fun. Because because I love I I hate to be weak. Because because we are the ones who actually put energy in our staff, whether our friends and family and our businesses. Yeah. And and being the leader as so called, if we like, I hate to be weak. If I'm sick, I hate to be even cough in front of my my colleague. Because I hate to be weak. I just have to be that strong personality all the time. And th and that weakness really kills me and killed me as well. So you gotta be. You got. It doesn't matter what's happening inside. You got. I always love to have a strong persona about me around my colleague. Because I, if I go down, they go down, and they have lack, and and that's what kills kills all the vibe. You got. You got to have a strong mindset all the time. Fuck. Okay. You know when you know I, the, when I was first getting to know you, I came and I showed you how to meal prep. Remember that night? I said to you, "What? What's your goal? Like, you don't have to fucking really yeah. like. You don't. You could yeah. just play golf all day and." Yeah. Um, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And you said to me, I want to make more money, yeah. but I want to travel every inch of the earth. Yeah, yeah. there's 192 countries in the world and I want to cover, cover them all if I can. And I thought that is, that's the most inspiring shit. You've done Mount Everest, you've done, yeah. hey, tell them, tell them about that thing, you, 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 the scuba diver thing you're working on. Uh, the, the, the license the, you're getting for oh, the, 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 the peri course, yeah, yeah, so you can go up to 18 meters, you can dive, yeah. So he's so learning going, how to scuba you. dive? Yeah. Specifically with trainers to do a shipwreck. Where is it? Yeah, so it's it's in Vanuatu in the Pacific Islands. Vanuatu, yeah, which is not far from Fiji. Yep. And there's a shipwreck. They call it a million dollar dive, where all the Americans, when they're leaving after World War II, they left all the armory, the tanks, the 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 guns, and there's a big shipwreck there. 
and, and you can actually dive to it and just uh, just dive around it. it apparently it's very spectacular i did a great a great bad reef dive and i saw wow uh, uh, like up up and i thought wow, that's the most beautiful scene i've ever seen it's this literally red color things and they turn maroon the black turns green and you touch them the thing expands it's it's, it's literally the, magical the, underwater the, um, the great bad reef Yes, I understand. Uh, the, 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 the the recreation dive, the coral, what's yes, it called? Yes, the, corals. I can't remember the name. Yeah. And, yeah, and and there's so much and there's so much beauty out there to see. And same same goes for travel. You go to a different country, meet different people, have different vibes. It's so beautiful. That's I think one, that's one of the best educations you can have if if you can afford to. Yeah. If you can figure out the way and you figured it out and <clears throat> you've you've just encouraged me to actually, you know, I didn't I I never thought like doing all these things might be achievable for me, yeah. maybe, but you've just said, you, you told me, John, you can do it, put in the work, keep going. Yeah. You leveled me up. Yeah. How about what you did a couple of months ago, you went to Mongolia? Yeah, that, that was a Porsche experience. They do it all around the world. This one was in Inner Mongolia, which is part of China. So uh, it's called Hua, Hua Bin. I think the, the and, and what you do is you just drift. The, all the, they, they put this 80, 80 Porsches on you, brand new. And you just drive a new Porsche every 15 minutes and just drift on these pads. They had literally 20 pads on the on snow. I can I can send you a snapshot. You can. Can you can you send us some snippets yeah. for the screen? Yeah, I will. Uh, and uh, and then you just drift these Porsches um, everywhere, which is which is pretty cool. And that's legal. So he's so he's drifting Porsches in <coughs> he's in drifting Porsches yeah, in nice. Mongolia in the snow yeah. for fun with your mates. Yeah. I remember you send you were there and you're sending me on WhatsApp. I'm fucking doing some open for inspection. I'm thinking. Yeah. Fuck this! I'm going to do this myself yeah. and figure this out. And you're like, yeah, you got to do this shit, Johnny. Yeah, this is what life's about. Yeah. Experiences. Yeah. All these experiences you're doing. You yeah. did Tomorrowland. So, yeah, I did Tomorrowland last year in Belgium. That was epic. And ho- and we're trying for Burning Man this year. So that should be another There's epic. There's me Tomorrowland in my speedos. You <laughs> yes. inspired by that? Very inspired. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's when I went to Tomorrowland. That's what little I, is this. Uh, I think I was emptied off my head that uh, <laughs> on that. I was having the time of my life. Yeah. That, um, that's really cool. And then I introduced you to Ziz yeah. and you got into the Ziz lifestyle yeah. as well. Yeah, because because people like like everyone thinks that you know gold and diamond are, are solid commodities apart from property. Uh, like, Experiences. Like, same same thing as diamond. Diamonds was, was they just it's it's all about marketing. This big marketing company in America, uh, diamonds are not forever. Diamonds are not not limited. They are limited. They make the, them now, right? Yeah, yeah. So the South African guy which sold it to the uh, ultimate American uh, entrepreneur. Uh, so, so he literally controls pretty much all the diamonds in the world now, or they have been for the last 50 years. They control and supply. It's not unlimited. Diamonds were not there forever. It's all about advertising, and people think that they're limited, and it's, it's forever. It's, it, it never was. America never, America never even knew about diamonds. They just expanded to that. So, so it's a mindset, like Louis, Louis Vuitton, your Gucci, your brands. It's... It, uh, Technically, they don't hold any value, do they? They, they, they don't have anything. Like, I guess experiences what do matter, person. family does matter. Yeah. But the marketing is so strong that it actually rules our brains now. Mar- right? It does. Whether it's social or, or social media or, 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 or the marketing and with, the, with the branding. I'm encouraging you to get out there more. I'm pushing <clears throat> Harry. I'm yeah. going, bro, more people need to listen to you talk. And you're yeah. like, you didn't care so much. Yeah. I've been driving you. Let's do more podcasts. Yeah. And finally, you're doing yeah. it, which yeah. is great. Yeah. I want you to. I yeah. think you can yeah. help a lot of people. Yeah, because like be, being being fit, that's what matters. Spending quality time with your family, that's what matters. Earning a good lifestyle, that's what matters. Not wearing brands and having a fancy cars at the end of the day. Exactly. If you can't even afford them, right? 100%. I meet. I, I literally have found so many guys, whether it's your Porsches or your Land Rovers or your Lamborghinis, they don't have money Nothing. to buy the number plates after the finance is done. What's the point of this? These Bentleys. Hundred percent. Yeah, and there's Rolls Royce. You can. I, I don't even own a car, so you know, the G, that Jared, Harry just gives me his G wagon. and He said to me, "It's yours." Yeah. I was, I'm like, I love this G wagon. You're like, yeah. well, it's yours now. We're business partners. Just take yeah. it whenever you want. Yeah, because I I travelled public transport for the first five years when I came to the country. My father gave me money to my first Honda Civic that I bought for seventeen grand mm. from from a dealership. I had, I didn't had any. Car. You don't need fancy cars to. to I, to, I drove to, my to Camry around and. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. dude, I want every fucking car I can get eventually. Yeah, of course, every, everyone does. But <laughs> when you can afford it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did you see his garage? Yes, the other day. So this was um, this was his garage. We did a sh- shoot in it just the other day, where mm. just filled with supercars for Never Home. Yeah. See all that Maybachs. And 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 most Porsches. of the guys there are all immigrants like me. They came to the country with pretty much nothing you got on the them. the Maybach. He went to. Um, Tomorrowland with me. me. Yeah. yeah, and see all that. Uh, yeah. And 
whether it's the guy, the bald guy, the upal guy. I didn't say yeah. that. Yeah. And they all immigrants. They all came like me. They had nothing on them. Like Suk, this guy upal, he 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 was cleaning houses, uh, going to people's houses, and 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 that's and then eventually he got into a steel business and into structural steel now. Yeah. Another story. So so it's not that the, the we just came with millions of bucks from us. It's just hard work and honesty eventually. But and you you set all of these guys up though. Sorry, you set a lot of these guys up. Yes, I I, I help I helped as much as good because I I really believe if you have a strong group, they will only give you power and 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 you can only benefit out of them rather than having a small mind and just trying to cut cut everyone out and and you'll be the only uh, only one left. You, you can't you can't get any. Self and all these. Um, yeah, I've met a few people. Th- even uh, good old Akshay, man, he's killing it. Yes, yeah. Like, Stay manufacturing because you know, he was in restaurants. I mean, I'm, I'm literally finance hundreds of them. There's no money in a, in a, in a, in a small because labor costs have gone so high. He so we got a mutual friend, goes to our gym. Yeah, Akshay told you Akshay. about me actually in the first yeah. place, right? Yeah, he did. So thanks, Akshay, for setting my <coughs> everything up. You said to Akshay, stop what you're doing. Yeah, we're going to set a whole new business up. You're going to manufacture stairs. He was going back home, India. When I met now, him, him. he rocks up to my house in a Maserati the other week yeah. to buy some clothes off me. Yeah. He goes, man, Harry changed my life. Yeah. Because of Harry. Yeah, he's he's in state of manufacturing and that's the niche market. He's got his own factory, niche yeah. market. You saw the niche and you said, yeah. was he making sales before that? No. Yeah. But you said, <laughs> but he's helping people, dude. It's freaking yeah. amazing. Yeah, because there's a big saying in India that you, you can have a, have, have a can of ants coming back, back from home. Or I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will be. And people are so small mindset that uh, that the, that they went to the airport to the customs. They said, "Okay, we got to transport that to Australia," and and the customs said, "Okay, you got to put a cover on it because ants they, they'll, they'll come out." And the guy who was who was doing the courier said, "No, you don't put a cover. They 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 ants back, back from home. If any ant will climb up, the other ant will go up and pull the leg down. Oh. Everyone will be down. Don't worry, they will never go up." It's a crab in the bucket mentality, bro. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so so you can't have that small mindset. You gotta you gotta have everyone grow around you. To, to be and you know, since I've been around you too, it, I, I feel the energy of different people. Yeah, yeah. Some have been very supportive yeah. and others have given me nothing. Yeah. And that's like, what's going on? Yeah. I, I'm actually uh, lear- learning learning about people more too with what you're teaching me. So I can't yeah. thank you yeah. enough. Like the countries, Norway, Sweden, they're all socialist economies. They, they can't yeah. have too much rich people. They want parity with, with everyone. You go to countries like Dubai or India or even China, there's so much parity. Like it's, it's, it's mind blowing. I don't. I I I never supported. I, I don't support that much parity. The rich being so rich and poor being so poor. I think there has to be parity from the comments. Remember when we first started, we were trying to get like uh, someone to just help with marketing for Never Home. Yeah. And like people were just holding information. Yeah. And you're like, why the fuck wouldn't that guy just give us a phone? We just want a phone number. What the fuck's wrong with this person? You know, I won't say who it is. Yeah. I think in Australia now people have this selfish mindset of not wanting others to do well or they get really – I think yeah. it's, it's a tall poppy syndrome here. Yeah. But we need to break that and show through Never yeah. Home. We yeah. want everyone to be better, yeah. life, yeah. fitness, yeah. Uh, abundance yeah. mindset. Yeah. Like it's Only all- by the exchange of ideas and the right networking you can get somewhere. If, you got, if you're in a problem – you, if 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 you got the right networking, only then you can you can help someone. What's 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 wrong in that? You built my team. Yeah. Well, our team, I should say, yeah, with the yeah, brand. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to open up a store, a Never Home Retail Store. Yeah. I never thought I'd open up a store for ten years. Yeah. With, within meeting Harry, we're op- we're, op- we're opening up a store within the next yeah. probably six yeah. months, realistically. Yeah. Yeah. Station Walk, Bang on Ten Beach Station Road, Walk, Brighton, Brighton Beach yeah. Road. Yeah. You own the building. Yeah. You're doing your finance upstairs. Yep. We're going to deck it out super sexy. Yep. Maybe we should, Justin, sorry, we might have to get you to set up a podcast studio there for us. Yeah, yep. we will. Um, but, you know, this is because I've been out of network with Harry. Yeah. So I am I'm, I feel like, you know what, it's time for me to really yep. start being smart with it. <coughs> and the more the business succeeds, the more we both succeed. Yeah. This would be one of your, you have a vodka company, you've got, yep. you're working, are you working on weed as well? Yeah, my, my, my business partner does Green Lab. He yeah. owns that. Yeah. And, and he owns a w- w- Vodka Plus and Gin Plus. So there's a couple of alcohol companies. I know I've got a couple minutes left. And quickly tell him before we wrap it up. Yep. Fucking so much you're doing blows me away. You're opening up the Indian National Basketball League. The INBL, so that's that's really going strong. because But there's so much of corruption back home that we got to deal with. It's, we got the license and hopefully we'll be marketing our teams in the next couple of months. We're trying to get some big names out back home, like whether it's Shaq or whether it's Michael Jordan. They want to support basketball in India, just on the back of China Basketball League. And hopefully by the by, by middle of this year, you, you, you will be hearing some, some, some strong news. It's, it's, it's really going strong. There's, we need multiple podcasts with you. So yep. if you're watching this, can we can we do some more? Because yep. we didn't even touch on 
no. half the shit we wanted to speak yeah. about, running out of time. Yeah. I just want to uh, kind of finish on something because we've Please. finished. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to throw in first? Anything you want to say? No, no, that's that, that's it. I just I just says straight strong, cool uh, like, uh, uh, stay like happy, and, 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 and yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, everyone will just you know, yeah, you, you just get there where you want to be. Um, add point ten, so uh, yeah. and ranch who is you've got on ranch is our yeah. business development and a yeah. growth strategist. Yeah, because he actually gave me some st- tips to speak about. He said, yeah. add point, add this point, close it by saying that with all the experience that Harry has, success, business, nuance. And what he's gone through, you mm. can relate to it, and a lot of listeners could relate to. We share the same vision for Neverhome, mm. so looking forward to taking the business to the next stage. Yeah, you yeah, know we will, yeah. no yeah. doubt about it at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's yeah. your Instagram handle? It's Harry Panky. I, I think ba- Banky underscore Harry. Panky underscore Harry. Yeah, we'll, we'll put the links up too. Sure. Can we do this maybe once? Uh, let's be realistic. Once every two months. Yes. And, and make some more con- I know you're super busy. Yeah, probably once a month. Can we do once a month? If you can, yeah. yeah that would be I'll, better. I have so many questions to ask you. Yeah. We'll wrap it up. Thank you, Justin. Uh, Central House here. Yeah. Book him out. Service is great. We have one, two, three, four, five cameras. Okay. Yeah. Five cameras. Three video guys here. Thank you so much. Justin, you're amazing. Thanks for making the time. Yeah. Hit him up if you want to do a podcast. Yeah. The studio here is great. Mm. The lady gave me a coffee at the front. I don't know if you worded them up, but I got treated like royalty when I walked in. You got me, it was really good. Lunch. <laughs> Maybe it was the legs you saw. <laughs> yeah. There's a freaking uh, golf, co- golf yeah. course here too, in- indoor golf. Yeah. It's a really, really beautiful place to do a podcast. So yeah. I really encourage you to support the guys. Yeah. Uh, the team's great. They put um, raw files together. Yeah. They do snippets for you too, if you like. And they're just like, yeah. they're cool people. It's, it's a funny thing about Johnny's legs. That's how I connected with him the first time. I went to Muscle City because I used to see his Instagram all the time. So I, was, I know his legs. And I walked up with Akshay one day and he was on the stepper. And I walked past. I said, Akshay, that's Johnny. I said, how do you, how do you fucking know? I said, I know the legs. And he was just stepping up with, with his arms he on. He came up to me. And I came, I and I came back. He was finishing up. I said, Johnny Star? He said, yeah. yes, I am. I said, we are just little fans of you. <laughs> <laughs> and as Akshay told you, I know the legs. <laughs> Look at it now how life just comes... Yeah. And and uh, you know you're so nice to me. You're like I'm a property developer. I'm like, yeah, yeah. and I said, can I sell some properties? They're like, go for it. <laughs> you just yeah. gave them to me. It was like just like that. Yeah. You gave me. I think you gave like you just gave me. You just gave me ten properties to sell last week. Yeah. yeah. Like that. You know that's a dream client. You, if you sell thirty properties a year, you're doing well. Yeah. So yeah, I can't I can't thank you enough. It's been a blessing. But yeah. um, we deserve everything that's coming to us because we're putting in the work. Yeah. yeah. We'll see you on the next podcast.